construction worker to the emergency room. You see it, it happening to other people, but when it actually happens to yourself and you see it happening in front of you, it's, uh, it's a lot scarier. His daughter tells Denver 7 his long road to recovery is just one issue their family's facing now. Students behaving badly. What we can see instead is acting out, non-compliance, breaking the rules, being aggressive. From destructive TikTok trends to forming fight clubs, Colorado schools are dealing with disruptions. What I see that as, that behavior, is really a call for help. Tonight, Denver 7 looks into why teens are acting out. Traffic along I-70 is back to normal tonight near the Eisenhower Tunnel. The interstate was closed for most of the day following a five-vehicle crash that left a semi-driver dead. Mm. Colorado State Patrol says the semi was coming out of the tunnel late last night when the driver lost control. And the truck collided then with vehicles parked in the construction zone before it burst into flames. And a man working in that construction zone was also injured as he tried to get out of the way. His daughter tells Denver 7's Addie Guajardo that her dad is now facing a long road to recovery, but he's well on his way. for 17 hours. It was scary. Two mangled semi trucks and several vehicles littered I-70 near Silverthorne. When he told us, we just kind of like stood there in shock. Amy Malishka's father, Timothy Malishkin, was working in a construction zone late Tuesday night when officials say a semi truck driver lost control. He was on his vehicle operating the machine when he saw the other 18 wheeler crash into him and as he crashed into my dad's truck, he got ejected out of his seat and um, fell into the ditch. The driver of the semi truck died. Timofey, a husband and father of six, survived. Thank God that he's alive. And is recovering in the hospital. He had a couple stitches on the side of his head um, just from the impact of him being ejected from his vehicle. The impact of the crash fractured Timofey's spine and shoulder, broke several ribs and bruised his lung. He took a couple steps today. He's totally, he's recovering a lot better than we all expected. Worse still is the damages done to his finances. Timofey is the family's sole breadwinner. His daughter worries about paying the medical bills. He's never been in this kind of uh, an injury since I was born, so this was very heartbreaking. A cousin launched a GoFundMe to help keep the family afloat. Their goal is to raise $50,000 and to remind others to slow down in construction zones. Addie Guajardo, Denver 7. And Colorado State Patrol believes speed was a factor in that crash last night. Now, if you've driven I-70, you know it can get pretty tricky around the Eisenhower Tunnel. So CDOT tonight wants to remind all of us winter weather that's coming can make it even trickier. That's how the I-70 mountain corridor is. Uh, you don't know what to expect on that corridor. The weather can be nice at one point as you're driving along, and then as you move forward, uh, it could be that it's snowing. And CDOT cautions drivers on I-70, be prepared for closures, whether it's from weather or crashes like last night. Now, further west, crews are working to repair the summer mudslide damage on I-70 through Glenwood Canyon. Tomorrow night, eastbound lanes will be closed until early Friday morning. The state hopes to have that section completely repaired by Thanksgiving. New at 10, Westminster Police say Westminster Police Chief Tim Carlson is retiring. The city says it will start a new search for a new chief immediately. Uh, Carlson's been on administrative leave since July when the city was reviewing the workplace environment within the Westminster Police Department. And that report was handed over to the city last week. The city says it found Carlson did not effectively manage the department's culture and that an unnamed senior officer routinely demeaned department employees. So the city says it will keep working with staff toward improving the culture in that police department. Hospitalizations from COVID-19 are back to some of their highest levels of the year. According to the state, there are 922 people in the hospital tonight with confirmed cases of COVID-19. That's the highest since January 4th, when there were 924 people hospitalized with confirmed cases. Adding to the concerns, the number of vaccinated patients is on the rise. They make up just under one quarter of patients with confirmed cases. That number was closer to 15% just a couple of weeks ago. The Governor Polis says the number of people hospitalized could be a lot lower if everyone would get the vaccine. I just can't emphasize how important it is to get protected. 
this simply wouldn't be a crisis if more Coloradans stepped up and got vaccinated. If for some reason you don't care enough about yourself, you don't love yourself, you don't want to protect yourself, I hope you care about your family and neighbors and others uh, enough to get vaccinated so that we do not exceed our hospital capacity. So far, 77% of Coloradans eligible for the vaccine have gotten the shot, one shot. 70% are fully vaccinated. Now, while concerning, the rise in cases among the vaccinated is not necessarily surprising. It's known that the vaccine's effectiveness drops as time goes on. In July, the CEO at Pfizer said data shows its vaccine efficacy drops 6% every two months, leaving it roughly 84% effective after six months. That's why Pfizer and other vaccine makers are pushing for booster shots. So far, the FDA has only authorized Pfizer's booster for certain groups of people. And Colorado continues to run low on ICU beds. According to the latest data from the state, ICUs are at 91% capacity tonight, leaving just 149 beds available. More than a quarter of Colorado hospitals say they are expecting a shortage of ICU beds within this next week. Well, the field trips resulted in a COVID outbreak at a school in Centennial. Tri-County Health says all fifth graders and teachers at Willow Creek Elementary will be in quarantine through next Friday. The health department says the students were exposed to COVID during a field trip last week to Camp Chile. The agency did not say just how many students have so far tested positive. Police in Fort Collins are warning parents about a reported fight club at city parks. They say teens are using social media to share where and when these fights will happen. Officers will be conducting extra patrols around parks, but police are asking teens who hear about these fight clubs to report them immediately. From intentionally destroying school bathrooms to reports of fight clubs at city parks, teens seem to be acting out more since returning to class. Brighton 27J says all of its schools are now experiencing a high volume of disciplinary concerns. And today, Denver 7 Sloan Dickey talked to a psychologist to find out why. A new environment paired with new technology is causing new problems in Colorado schools. We're seeing an increase in stress, an increase in difficulties at home for families and kids, as well as an increase for children. The most recent data from Safe to Tell show a 36% increase in reports to the state's anonymous tip line from teenagers compared to the same time last year with reports of suicide threats and bullying. School districts are also reporting higher rates of harassment and vandalism leading to discipline. The Douglas County School District shared the potential consequences of disturbing TikTok challenges, some of which could land students in jail. On Wednesday, a fire in a bathroom caused a Brighton school to close. Administrators are investigating whether the damage was influenced by the popular social media app. Bullying has always been an issue for this age range and certainly, of course, for adults as well online. And all of that can just add to stress and complexity for youth. Dr. Tracy Vozar, a professor at the University of Denver's School of Professional Psychology, says the problem lies beyond social media in a breakdown of social connection. Stress, trouble adjusting back to the school environment, difficulties managing expectations at school and stressors at home. As students readjust to a reunited classroom environment, she urges parents to pay attention to their kids. It's so important to remember that kids are going to take on the emotional context of what they see around them. So if we're stressed as caregivers, our children are going to feel stressed. If we're anxious, our children are going to feel anxious. Kids adjust in different ways, she says, but the most important steps parents can take is to watch for signs of stress, talk to them about social media engagement, and to remember that nothing beats spending time together offline. Finding ways, even five minutes, where you're really able to connect with your child and finding a way to do so that's fun for your child, fun for you, or that really allows you to have that mm. attention. Sloan Dickey, Denver 7. Stress has been an issue for so many teenagers during this pandemic. A survey from the American Psychological Association found that two in five teenagers, this is 13 to 17 year olds, said their stress had increased over the past year. 81% of the teens surveyed reported feeling negatively impacted by their school's closing because of COVID-19. 